It's a quick video on how to align your shaft on a Sea Dew boat. This particular boat here is a Sea Dew 230 SP 2012 model. As you can see, I already have the alignment tool in place and I have already aligned the engine. I almost forgot to make this video, but before I go any further, I want to give a special thanks to WFO Performance for allowing me to use their drive shaft alignment tool. So with no further ado, if you are doing this type of work to your boat or jet ski, you probably already know how to take your pump off. Although this is not terribly hard, I would assume that you can use other videos to get this far. And by this far, I don't mean just the uh, plate on the back of the jet pump mount, also known as the uh, transom plate. Also, I have removed the infamous stainless steel drive shaft guard which I am going to replace with hex head bolts. These screws, I don't think I'll be able to get them out again. And I don't want to take that risk, so I will be replacing these with stainless steel bolts. The other side of these uh, have a nut, and I'll show you where that's at because it took quite a while for me to get this off because the drive shaft tool has a mount on both sides so as you can see this side has a mount and the other side has a mount and the plate screws onto it so it's essentially a shaft inside of a shaft that screws into a plate so I couldn't just use one side so I'm gonna go inside and show you what I did here I have removed the superchargers as you can see they're gone this is a 215 engine uh, 260 engine would be the same the superchargers are gone you get a better view of that for you here also removed um, the uh, sensor there that you see just hanging down it actually goes right there uh, deals with the oil I won't get into the name I'm a little bit hot so some of the exact names escape me um, so with the supercharger removed and a few other pieces that weren't necessarily in the way but I did not want to break uh, we'll go ahead I believe that's the top sensor if I'm if I'm not mistaken so the alignment tool has a second piece that goes into your PTO that second piece is right here now I've already removed this uh, piece as you can see because I've already aligned the ski but this part goes all the way to the back of your PTO your drive shaft bearing also slides into this. When you do this, you want your drive shaft bearing on there. Matter of fact, let me try to put it all back. Okay, now it's back in there. It is touching the back of the PTO, and the drive shaft tool is inside of the uh, entrance to the boat uh, where the bellow would be. The theory behind this is when the drive shaft tool well, I'll just show you. When the drive shaft alignment tool meets the uh, portion that goes into the PTO, it slides into the PTO portion. The shaft here coming from the, or simulating your drive shaft, slides into the part that simulates the PTO alignment. If they go into each other, you are looking good. If they crash into each other, you have a few adjustments to make. I would give myself, I would say I'm about 95%. <clears throat> when I started this, I was at probably 60% uh, center. Now I'm closer to 95. What I did was I took the advice of um, the uh, Richard at WFO. I loosened uh, just the only the motor mount that I needed to to adjust the engine and in doing so I added an aluminum uh, washer I'm not going to tell you where I put it however there are a couple places you can put it it's debatable I don't want to get into that 
I shimmed the engine nonetheless uh, through the advice that I received from WFO and voila here we are with a uh, once again an aligned engine and um, the issue I was having was cavitation severe cavitation and um, it came from sucking up a pot can or beer can most likely and uh, this is what it was doing to my wear ring now one thing I would like to point out is that if you leave the orientation of your carbon seal I'm sorry not wear ring the carbon seal if you leave the orientation you'll be able to tell where the alignment is off at and in this case I was able to tell because the bellow or uh, shaft boot is screwed onto the boat the carbon seal doesn't move the steel ring that mounts or butts or touches the carbon seal that spins with the shaft so that actually so when removing the carbon seal once you get the shaft out you can take a quick look in there real good and see what part looks new or as normal and what part looks like a POS and here you can see my shaft was dragging on the low end of the seal and uh, it was causing me issues with cavitation um, and I, I was not getting any water leakage at this point I still got a little bit of lip left there but I could feel it I have uh, 340 hours on this boat and I can feel if I hit a leaf so you can only imagine the craziness I felt and many of my fellow boaters would feel because they all know their boats very well from something like this going on once again this was caused more more likely than not by the motor mounts just getting older and sagging and once again that was a um, uh, it's common sense but WFO pointed that out to me like you know I thought maybe the engine shifted or twisted from sucking up a beer can in the water but it's more or less due to the age it's a 2012 um, so that's where I'm at. That's uh, a few of the ins and outs on the um, alignment for these boats. The other thing that I want to come back to is how to remove the drive shaft guard. So there's two Phillips head bolts, and they uh, they're bolts because they have nuts on the other end, and they actually you have to remove the um, silicone that they placed over them so once you remove them off as you can see around them it's a lot cleaner because I removed the silicone it will expose the nuts and then you'll need someone to hold them on this side while you unscrew on the other it's uh, right next to if you have the wheatless system which is that right there uh, mine is plugged because I don't have one didn't come with one but it's right next to the wheatless system so there you have it how to remove the drive shaft guard and I would recommend replacing it if it starts to sh even strip a little bit on you. Replace it with heads, heads, stainless steel. And that's all we got there. Taking a look at the village pumps. Uh, once again, thanks to WFO for allowing me to use their alignment tool. As you can see, I did a decent job at the alignment. And uh, also thanks to uh, Green Hulk. Um, this cavitation caused me to... Uh, go ahead and get my superchargers rebuilt and I had a set uh, rebuilt with uh, Green Hulk through uh, them and it turned out great and um, it's just been uh, quite the task trying to figure out this cavitation so hopefully with this alignment uh, fixed I'll have uh, smoother days ahead of me I'll keep you guys updated in the comments and I'll talk to you soon one thing I almost left out, spacers. If your kit doesn't come with them, which I think it should, uh, but just in case, you're going to need uh, spacers between the uh, alignment plate and the uh, transom mount. Uh, so they'll go over the bolts so that uh, you have the spacer to simulate if the jet pump was on there. Otherwise, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll go so well. I didn't try it, I just used the spacers anyway.